Okay. Just a quick reminder uh, to everyone, we are sponsored. We are sponsored by uh, Robert Half uh, Talent Solutions. Uh, as you know, Robert Half is a, an amazing repository of IT talent. Um, not only do they help you find great, skilled IT workers, uh, but if you are looking for uh, skill, uh, looking for work yourself, uh, they also have an amazing repository of open roles. Uh, so please go out, visit our friends at Robert Half Talent Solutions, and uh, you know they they can provide you with also some really interesting uh, information and best practices around retaining the talent you have. So lots of really good info. Uh, we 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 love that they sponsor the show and cannot thank them enough. So the web link is below me here. Um, so please go uh, check them out and uh, and uh, go make yourselves uh, your workforce uh, a better place to be. So with that, I am so honored and so excited to welcome this group to the live stream today. Um, we are going to be talking about um, what it's like to um, have people uh, who are harder hearing, hard of hearing or deaf in the workplace. And uh, we've got two amazing speakers who are going to tell us all about it. We've got uh, Dawn and Regina. Um, they are both with the, <laughs> with the National Technical Institute for the Deaf. And uh, Don, Regina, welcome to the program. Thank you. We're glad to be here. Uh, and you'll notice too, we have uh, Regina, who's got an interpreter on the line. So uh, Donna, thank you so much for uh, helping us out today and uh, giving Regina a voice uh, and, and teaching us all um, what it's like to be deaf in the workplace and how we can be more accommodating um, as hearing people and what the deaf community can can really bring in terms of diversity and creativity uh, to your workforce. So with that, Don, we'll, we'll kick off with you. Um, tell us a little bit about uh, the Institute for the Deaf. How did you get involved with it? Kind of what's your why and your how? Sure. Uh, yes, I started working at the National Technical Institute for the Deaf about 20 years ago. And we're part of the Rochester Institute of Technology, which is RIT. Hopefully some of you out there are familiar with RIT in Rochester, New York. And at NTID, we, it is the largest and the first actually technological college for the deaf. It was established in 1965. And the reason it was established at RIT is because there was a desperate need in the country or in the world actually for a technical college exclusively for deaf individuals. And so NTID was established at RIT. Why was RIT selected among all the universities that were being considered? Because we are first and foremost a technical school and the established co-op program. There is a huge emphasis on employment at RIT, STEM employment, technical employment. So the IT fields, the engineering fields are very popular with students, and that includes the deaf and hard of hearing students as well. So that's how that all came about. How I got involved is I had a passion for sign language many years ago and I had taken a sign language course at a local community college. Actually, I was pursuing a degree to pursue a, another field entirely and met a deaf woman who was my sign language instructor and she really encouraged me because of my passion to pursue employment at RIT, at the National Technical Institute for the Deaf, working with deaf students. So I stuck. It's so where I landed 20 years ago and I stuck and I'm very grateful uh, for that because had I not pursued sign language, had I not pursued this career, I would not have had interactions with the wonderful deaf community uh, that I've grown to know and really feel a part of. Yeah, I mean, over the last 20 years, I mean, you have to have seen some amazing changes. I mean, the, the world has changed just, you know, not only with inclusivity and a focus on diversity, but just the technology that now exists. So, you know, what have you seen in terms of the number of, you know, enrollment for students who are coming in looking for work, kind of what types of roles they're looking for, um, kind of what changes have you seen over those years? Well, I, 
I can address that initially, and then I'm going to be excited to turn that over yes. to Regina because she is the one who works directly with the students and the alumni in the technical programs. And I know from we work at the Co-op and Career Center at NTID, so we employment is our thing. Uh, working with companies who are interested in recruiting deaf talent, who are interested in creating inclusive workplaces. That's our job. We're federally funded, and mm -hmm. that means we're available to everyone for in, to share resources, to share information about how to be successful, including some training that we offer that we can elaborate on a little bit more later. Huge changes in technology. Um, 20 years ago, we were excited about email, <laughs> right? We were excited about email yeah. with deaf and hard of hearing individuals in the workplace. And now there is just so much more with, look at us right now yeah. on a Zoom teleconference or on Twitch, you know, with a live stream and being inclusive. So there have been many, many technological advances that have benefited the deaf community and definitely supported their success and inclusion in all industries. Amazing. So good, awesome segue to Regina here. Um, Regina, tell us how you got involved um, with the Rochester Institute. You know, what's your why? And, uh, you know, what have you seen over the last few years since you've been involved with this, uh, with this community? Hi, everyone. Thanks for watching. I'm Regina Kipperman Kisselgoff. And I work at the NTID's Co-op and Career Center. For about 15 years now. But I'm a lifer, I have to say, as Don said, she's stuck, I'm gonna be here. You know, I started college at RIT NTID. I'm a graduate of RIT. I work here. So the whole spectrum, I'm an alum. I'm really proud to be here. I got interested in this profession. Um, I'm going to give you a little background. I was right. born in Russia. So I immigrated to the United States and I had to learn everything all over again. Education system was in a different language. The governmental system was different. So I had to learn about resumes and when, when it came to getting a job, I had to learn about resumes and workplace etiquette and I felt overwhelmed, but I was motivated to learn this. And I realized that my other peers were learning the same time I was, and they were motivated. And that kind of gave me a thrill to be able to teach other people what I had learned. So I decided to continue my, to my career and follow my passion, working with students, helping them write resumes and cover letters, helping them with their employment searches, and being coaches for a lot of the different employers that we work with. And I'm really thrilled that I made this decision and I've been in this field for so long. Now, regarding changes that have happened over the years, I can't say enough about the changes. The advances in technology have been a huge improvement for the people who are deaf and hard of hearing. With technology, we can communicate with hearing persons. There's texting which has no barrier. We have video phones. I'll describe that a little bit late, a little bit later. We've become much more independent thanks to the ability to use the technology that allows us to communicate with those who don't know sign language. Captioning is becoming very, very popular. A lot of people are very motivated to learn sign language, to be able to communicate with people who use visual language. So I think people are willing to meet each other halfway. They want hearing people want to learn about deaf culture and deaf people are more than willing to welcome them into the community and see us as equals instead of the way they saw us years ago. So technology continues to improve and I don't see that slowing down. Yeah, I mean, I think that is so true and, and it's so amazing that, you know, I, I take all this technology for granted as a hearing person and I just can't imagine what it does um, for for the deaf community to really feel included because 
I mean, even as a hearing person, I think I text and chat and do all kinds of things way more than I talk on the phone or uh, live talk, especially being remote. So um, I think it's it's an amazing uh, advancement. Um, but Regina, you know, tell us for your students who are graduating, they're, you know, it's scary enough going into the workforce totally abled and, and it's, it's a very overwhelming process. So what do you do to help motivate those students who, who are going into a workforce where, you know, they they may be the only deaf person at the, at the organization. And so not only are they learning their jobs, but also learning how to best communicate with their coworkers and, and their teams. Sure. I've met with and worked with a lot of deaf students, and they really are as diverse as hearing people are. Some of them need advocacy. Some of them are already ready to self-advocate and join the workforce. Some of them understand requesting interpreters and talking about their type of disability or their tools and tips to communicate with hearing people in the workplace. So. They, all of that can make them more productive. Some students are a little less prepared. They're not ready to advocate for themselves in the workplace. So I have a variety of students. They're, they come from all different places. They might be in a residential school for the deaf. They might be in a high school with mainly um, hearing people. So our job at NTID is to teach the students the importance of how to ask for what you need for workplace accommodations, for how to communicate with your boss, Mm -hmm. and how to educate your hearing peers in the workplace. You have to talk to your boss, you have to communicate with your peers, and help them understand how best to communicate with you as a deaf person. Now, interviews can be scary for everyone, but especially for a deaf student. So we have practice or mock interviews, and then we videotape those, and we also talk about how assistant, assistive listening devices can be used to make you more effective in the workplace, just to quell those nerves, to allow them to communicate more smoothly and effectively with hearing people. I'm amazed how many people, how many deaf students come to me and they don't know how wonderful assistive technology can be. So then you've learned this and then they can in turn educate their employer and their peers in the workplace. So it's continually teaching and coaching and supporting those students. Amazing. It's just, it's so cool to, to know that programs like this exist. Um, and, and that's a, another great segue into, you know, as employers, people who are hiring, um, what are, the, I know every, you, you said every person is different, right? So everyone likes to communicate differently. And I think that's pretty universal. So as an employer, what questions can you ask someone who is deaf or hard of hearing to, you know, get them comfortable, to make them feel like, they can, you know, ask for the things they need. Uh, but, but more on the proactive side as the employer, what, what can you sort of help provide or, or what questions, I guess, could you be asking? Do you want me to, I was going to respond to okay. that. One of the things that I think is really important and Regina emphasizes is everybody is different. Mm-hmm. And I always express to the students I work directly with as well, who are deaf, also that they're the experts on communication because they have been interacting with hearing people their whole lives and the hearing people in the workplace they meet may not have that same experience having worked with someone who's deaf so making sure that they know the technology that's available to them so that when they are engaging in conversation with an employer they know what to ask for and they can demonstrate it that raises the comfort level of a recruiting manager or a hiring manager or anyone who they're going to be working with to know that this individual is knowledgeable about what they need to do their job also as companies organizations you can demonstrate that motivation for inclusion by making sure access is at the top of your priority list from the very early stages, from how you advertise a job, mm-hmm. for from wording that you use in your job postings, 
you know, if you're going to say a position requires phone, uh, make sure that you're clear about that. That doesn't necessarily mean it has to be a voice phone. It could be a video access Mm -hmm. or a text access situation. If deaf individuals see that access from those early interactions with a company, that raises their comfort level in being self-advocates all throughout that process. Yeah, that makes total sense. And, you know, just one follow up, because obviously being able to do the job is important, but just right that when you join a company, you join the company culture. So what are things that, you know, we can do from a culture perspective to help the debt, you know, if you if you have someone who is hard of hearing in your organization feel included in the, the fun stuff? Yeah. So, you know, the fun stuff is important as well. One fun thing is everybody could learn sign language. It could be a something, just some basic signs, even finger spelling. Um, That's something that is really fun. And that's enough. Uh, A lot of people think that you have to become fluent in ASL to communicate. And that's not the case. I mean, just with some basic signs and the ability to spell some things, that can be great fun and show that you're putting forth the effort to communicate and include deaf individuals. It really goes a long way toward making somebody feel included and a part of the workplace culture. From there, you can continue to add new signs from time to time time uh sign a week or so forth or sign at every meeting so it's really not hard it's it's just little by little and continued growth and you would be amazed at how many signs you might already know before even taking um, any basic classes just even the sign for a drink it's very basic that's a gesture that someone might automatically know and there are many other things even gesturing can help get your message across the importance with deaf individuals to make eye contact is really a cultural component of our language to make sure that you're paying attention and really showing the person that they're valued and listening to them. So keeping um, great eye contact. I don't know, Don, do you have any other fun things you would add? Really related to social activities, I think of the internship programs some companies have and making sure that the deaf individuals are included in those, making sure accommodations are provided. So many times assumptions can be made that, oh, you know, maybe there's a deaf intern and they may not be interested in going because no interpreter is at social events. Provide interpreters at at those social events and make sure that they're, they're included in with their colleagues and peers as well. Just, I, I think students can sense when a company truly values inclusion and diversity throughout their entire organization. You know, as you talked about culture, Maddie, Mm -hmm. um, you know, individuals can readily see if that culture of inclusivity is is there. It's really important. Yeah, I I totally agree. Um, So I I hate that this 15 minutes tends to go very quickly, but um, (laughs) I do have one more question, Regina. You and I were talking um, during the pre-chat about tools that, you know, tend to just you know, best practices, tools that you like using. Um, So I would love to sort of wrap up with, you know, your tips and tricks and anything you really enjoy using. I know one of the things you mentioned that, you know, I never thought of is that Zoom meetings do a really nice job of laying out all the pictures um, on one screen versus, you know, being in speaker mode. And so you can see everybody's eyes and see who's talking. Um, You know, what, that was a great tip, but what else do you have and what else can you share about uh, technology? Yeah, absolutely. First of all, I can't say it, um, it enough. Every deaf person is completely different. Yep. So I can't speak for myself. And I will say that I know every day I rely on the iPhone. And when I meet an individual, I can often take out the notes app or even a text message. Um, If I have a question to somebody or so forth, I can then show it to them or I can um, ask Siri to speak it out loud and read it for me. So that helps with an interaction. It's really easy. Most people have the phone with them all the time. 
Another um, thing is in the past, we would also depend heavily on writing back and forth on pen and paper. And that is occasionally sometimes what we need to use if that's all that's available. There are also several apps that you can download that I have on my iPhone that are like translation, speech to text, text to speech type apps mm -hmm. where it can um, take in what's happening auditorily and then show me what's happening in um, the text or I can text and it can uh, speak for me. There's also a video relay service called VRS, which I also have on my phone and I can call um, the operator hears and sees me and then I show up on my video phone and they call the other hearing person who doesn't have a video phone and are able to let them know what is being said and I can then see what um, the hearing person is saying. So you don't necessarily need an app, but that's what I particularly like to use. So, and I think that's something that you'll find that's fairly common tool that many deaf people do use. Some deaf people prefer to speak for themselves and they do have a voice that, and they would like to use that. That's called um, a voice carryover. That's another option on the phone as well, where they can actually speak on the phone and read a caption. Uh, it's a type of phone where captions can come up. Uh -huh. Often we have deaf people who like to use ASL interpreters, as we see here today, and for a variety of different events, maybe not everyday workplace scenarios, but for larger meetings or social events. I, I, you know, you can't have an interpreter with you 24 seven. <laughs> deaf people can't expect that. And so some people misunderstand that thinking, oh, I'm gonna have an interpreter with me wherever I go. And, and okay, first of all, I wouldn't want that. <laughs> second of all, it's just not gonna happen. <laughs> So just even prioritizing when you can get an interpreter. So there's a variety of tools that are out there. And again, I can only speak for myself. I like using my um, my mobile phone and VRS and interpreting service or interpreters for larger to style meetings. There are several other little things like such as flashing lights or strobing lights to show the doorbell and other sort of um, access type technology, strobes for fire alarms. Um, hard of hearing people, some will prefer hearing aids um, to help with any residual sound that they may have. Mm -hmm. I don't in particular. So like I said, there's so many varieties and yeah. so many differences and that is as fast as I could get that out there, but feel free to visit our website. Um, and I'm sure that Maddie will share that with you because we have a wealth of resources and information available to share with anyone who's interested. So please feel free to contact us at any time for um, any consultations or any help that we could uh, give you or assistance with working with deaf and hard of hearing individuals. Or even if you just wanna chat through the phone, give me a call through VRS to see what that's like anytime. <laughs> I love that. And that, uh, oh. yes, yes, it's very effective. Sorry, go ahead. Nope, that's amazing. So, um, I, on the closing slide here, I have QR codes to a ton of really interesting resources that both Dawn and Regina have shared with us. So, a link to the website, we've got a link to some best practices and trainings and, and, and then we have Regina shared with us um, some introductions to learning how to sign. So, um, you know, we can, we can all get involved and it's, it's, I was scanning through it all before the meeting and it's really helpful and really useful. So um, Dawn, before we leave, you know, if, if you are an employer and you want to be more inclusive and you're looking maybe like during all hands meetings or larger meetings to bring in interpreters for your deaf employee, is there you know a good way to find them? Is there a repository? Like where where do you recommend <laughs> people go? Because uh, interpreters are amazing people, and uh, I'm sure they're they're hard to come by. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, that's a great question. And we love our interpreters; they're fantastic people. We wouldn't be able to do what we do without them. And depending where you're located. Um, you know, there are various local agencies available in many communities and lots of interpreting agencies also provide national services, which means you can contact an interpreting agency that is not even in your geographical area and they can help you find local resources. Also, uh, especially since the pandemic, there's a real demand for what I'll say virtual 
access yeah. to interpreters like we have right here. Our interpreters have, enjo have joined us from their individual locations. So there is video remote interpreting that you can also access and companies can contract with uh, interpreting agencies to get that kind of service as well. So a great place to start if you have any questions about how to access any accommodation, including interpreting, please look us up, give us a call, and we'll point you in the right direction. Uh, and then, of course, you can also uh, do online searches for local resources, but we hope that you reach out to us because we'd like to help. That amazing we love that i'm actually going to share in this final moments here the entire zoom window because i just i want everyone to see how easy this is um and how i i think zoom has done a nice job here of uh making it really easy to have a cohesive meeting um and for us to all be able to collaborate and contribute to this conversation so as you can see through the whole i tried to break it up to make it a little more fun for the twitch but um you know this is this is easy uh and uh you know i i highly recommend you guys dig into um dig into these resources because uh i can imagine there are amazing people out there looking for work and i know we're all looking for amazing talent so um regina any final words final thoughts that you want to share with uh with the hdi community hmm just don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to approach a deaf person or we're nice, we're kind, we're not going to bite. And we are just like any of y'all, you know, we're just everyday people. We're fun. And um, just consider giving uh, deaf and hard of hearing individuals an opportunity. And I think if you do, you'll be very pleased and it will bring some great diversity and some different perspectives that you've never had in the workplace before. It, and it can really help out your um, company. I think perfect closing words here. Uh, I cannot thank you both enough for sharing, uh, sharing with us, uh, Dawn, for all the work that you do, and Regina, to all the work that you do in, in the community. Um, I thank you, thank you. Um, this was really interesting. I've loved talking to you both, and uh, I highly recommend reaching out to them on LinkedIn. They're both full of information, and it, I've enjoyed every minute of our conversation. So um, thank you so much to everybody. Thank you for taking the time this evening, and uh, we will see you all next week. Thank you Thank for you. Having us.